Welcome everybody. This is the first week of our social circle. We are so excited to have our weekly live. If you are new here, my name is Trisha. I am here with Sewing Parts Online and I'm going to have Brian pull up so he can say hi as well. Brian, you want to pop on? Hi everybody. Hello, hello. Alex is here too. I was going to say, Alex is in Come there. Here, Let's have her peek over too. <laughs> We were originally all going to be sewing with Trisha, but we had some tech difficulties. So I'm going to be running the show in the background and Trisha's going to be sewing the zipper bag today. Yes. And we're going to give you a little heads up. We've had some sadness around here. So I was ugly crying earlier. And so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to give you a heads up. I'm being real. <laughs> but we are going to make a zipper pouch in a little bit and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. But Brian, do you want to go ahead and tell everybody what the social circle is? Yes. So the social circle is going to be a weekly live event that we do every Wednesday at 1130 CST. Every other week, Sewing Parts Online is going to host it. And then every opposite week, we're going to have a guest come on and take over and do a project. So um, we were doing our So Creative live events a few times a year and we realized, you know what, we should come on every week and just do a little mini So Creative live mm -hmm. just to make sure that we're constantly staying on and, and providing information to everybody. Sounds good. Well, we are thrilled to bring you this beginner's project. If you are following us on our Facebook group, it is Sewing Parts Online uh, Sewing Community. We had posted the supply list, so I hope you have it all ready to go and you'll be sewing along with us. But I do see some comments coming through. Do we want to pop some comments up there, Brian, and say hi to some folks? Yes. Let's Here's see. Here's somebody we know. Deb Porter, hello. Welcome. We see some familiar names from Sew Creative Live. Mm -hmm. Awesome. AC Smith, hi from Georgia. Renee. Hello, hello. There's a name we know. We know that one for sure, yes. South Carolina. Oh, I bet it's beautiful there right now. Catherine, good morning. Oh, thanks you all for tuning in. We're excited to do this. We are getting ready to go. Oh, yes, that was Lisa's, um, see, I told you guys, not a good start. <laughs> Lisa's idea for the social circle, we had thrown it out there before asking, hey, do you guys have any names for our weekly live? And we loved her, so we went with it. So thank you, Lisa. We appreciate Look at, you. This is pretty cool. We got somebody turning in from Alaska. Alaska, that's cool. And we've got somebody turning in from Trinidad. <gasps> that that's is really awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys. What time is it in Trinidad? Yeah, Nisha, what time is it? I want to know. Let us know I'm in the interested. comments. <laughs> Very neat. Well, since this is a project, it can take a little bit to sew along with me. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. Let's go over the supply list and make sure that you have everything that you need in order to make this beginner friendly zipper pouch. Now, this is a different size than the one we're making today, but just an example. We're going to be doing a zipper pouch, but not just a zipper pouch. We're going to be doing a lined zipper pouch. We want it to be pretty on the inside too, right? So if you could see that. It'll have little zipper tabs, cute little outer lining, and your inner lining, or excuse me, your outer fabric and your inner lining. So it is going to be a whole lot of fun. We are also going to learn how to shorten a zipper. So let's just talk about if you only have a long zipper or you have zipper by the yard and you need a specific size, we are going to talk about how to shorten a nylon zipper. Now, please keep in mind that this is for a nylon zipper and not a metal zipper. It, it won't work with the metal zipper, but you can shorten a metal zipper. You would just have to have a different technique. And if you're not familiar with that, you can pop over to our TikTok after this and check out some of our little tips and tricks there because I do show you how to shorten a metal zipper there. But Nisha says it's 12.35 p.m. in Trinidad. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Now we know. Only an hour difference. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So again, we're going to go over what we have. So... We're going to start with our exterior fabric. It's going to be 10 by 10, and you need two pieces. And then we also need two 10 by 10 pieces of your lining fabric. And if you have a tendency to forget which one is which, I would highly recommend making little post-its and putting those on there. I got this idea from the cut loose patterns. They have these adorable little cutouts that you can pin to your fabric while you're prepping. 
and it keeps me all organized. So I like that technique. But today I use little mini post-its. And then in addition to those, you're going to need two little zipper tabs. These are one and a half inches by two inches. And like I said, you'll need two of those. And then in addition to that, we have some little tools that we're going to be needing. Um, before tools, let's talk about the zipper. So I'm using a 12 inch nylon zipper and we are going to be shortening it to eight and a half inches. The fabric Trisha is using is on the go line by Moda. Yes, that is true. Very cute. So we are going to be shortening this zipper to eight and a half inches for this project. Again, the outer and the lining fabric are going to be 10 inches. So that's an inch and a half difference. The reason that I like that is you're gonna have three quarters of an inch on each side, but our seam allowance is a half an inch. So that gives you a little bit of wiggle room when you're putting your bag together. So it doesn't matter really the size of your zipper as long as whatever your project is, it's just gonna give you that little extra on each side. So it's a very forgiving project. It's a great beginner project and hopefully you have fun sewing along with me. Do you have any more comments there, Brian? I'm looking through here as well. Here's a good one. I wish I was at home so I could sew along. Haley, you could pop in here and use the other sewing machine. <laughs> that would be kind of fun one day. We love that. She works with us. <laughs> okay, so those are the, the fabric and the zipper. So let's talk about some tools you'll need. I am using a regular presser foot. I'm also going to use the narrow foot for the Juki, but you could use a zipper foot for your machine. You will need a zipper when or zipper foot when we put it in. I also have my little screwdriver, my handy dandy screwdriver to replace my foot. So that usually comes in your accessory pack. If you're not really um, confident with your seam allowances and getting the right seam allowance, some machines allow you to use a little magnetic seam gauge. I like using this because you can just pop it on the needle plate, stays in place, and then you can just put the fabric against the seam gauge and it makes it nice and easy. Plus, if I'm trying to talk to you and do the same thing at the or so at the same time, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so I might use that seam gauge today. I always like to have a little handy dandy snips and also my tweezers. We all know that I love my bent tweezers, right? Those are great. I like having you know, a junky pair of scissors that I can use to cut my nylon zipper. And then I always have a piece of scrap fabric ready because you always wanna test sewing before you start your project. And then ideally I would recommend getting a cutting mat, which I have my cutting mat right here. You can see it's a, a very large one, but they come in a variety of sizes. It's really nice to be able to cut out your fabric using the cutting mat and a rotary cutter. We have a variety of them available. So this one here is pretty awesome. It's the true cut option, ergonomical, ergonomic. That's the word I'm looking for. And it's really good for your wrist. You won't have carpal tunnel or anything like that. It's a great option. And you can use it with their ruler. So this one is pretty cool because it has a lip on the end and it fits with this particular rotary cutter and it prevents it from sliding off on you and so you'll have nice straight cuts. So that is a wonderful option. You can also get a variety of other types of rulers. This one's been discontinued, but we have this one here in our studio. So I wanted to show you this size. It's a great size for cutting some fabric out. We've got a variety of the rotary cutters as well. This is a new favorite in here in our studio, the Creative Grids one. It has a nice weight to it. I also like the quilter select option too. So those are wonderful. You can use scissors, that's totally fine, but I find that the more accurate the cuts, the better results you get. So it is completely up to you. So hopefully everybody has their tools handy and we can get started. Oh, I can't forget the Wonder Clips. Love me some Wonder Clips. These are really, really helpful when you're putting in your zipper. You only need a couple, I grabbed several just in case, but you only need a couple to secure it in place while you're you get started, okay? And Brian had popped up that I am sewing on the Juki TL2000QI today. Now, normally I sew with the TL2010Q at home. That is a very similar machine to this one. Um, this is a straight stitch machine, wonderful machine. Um, the only difference between the two models is 
this does not have the sub tension up at the top and it also does not have the speed control. Now, I do enjoy using my speed control, so you may see me playing with the, the foot control a little bit, trying to regulate my speed. One thing that is absolutely awesome about this machine, but can take a little bit to get used to, is the foot control has a thread cutter option where when you tilt back, it'll cut your thread. So if you see me <laughs> all of a sudden go click and cut my thread, I might have to just back up, back stitch and start over, right? But it's a very, very cool feature. I love it. All right, well, what do you guys think? Am I ready to get started? Can I pop on and interrupt you really quickly? You sure can. I had somebody in Whenever the comments, someone in the comments asked where they can get the supply list. Um, we have it posted on our Sewing Parts Online community group, which is separate from our business page. It's an actual group where people can interact with each other. So it's posted at the top. It's going to be pinned there until the end of the live. And if you do go get that info from that page, go ahead and join our group because we have a great group of people. We have about 3.6 thousand people who all like to come and hang out with us during these lives. And they always get all of the information for our live events and so creative live early. That is very true. Also, um, for that particular group, it's wonderful because they can share pictures. So we've had a lot of our YouTube friends come over to our Facebook group because you can't share the pictures on YouTube, but they can show us what they've been working on and everything on our group. So we, we love it over there. And they also are able to give wonderful advice. We've got a bunch of seamstresses in there, people that do it for hobbies, people that do it for professional um, ways. And yeah, just lots of information shared. So all right, well, I think we can go ahead and get started so we can finish this project during our live. I am going to start by taking my um, exterior fabric first. And Brian, do you mind putting the second camera up so I can show them on this side? Perfect, so I am gonna start here and hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I'll try to keep my hands out of the way. <laughs> but the very first thing that we wanna do is take our exterior fabric and I want to show you what we're going to do with our zipper. So the zipper we're going to trim down to eight and a half inches. And when we're doing that, we're going to have some fabric on the left side and the right side available. Again, three quarters of an inch on each side. So we're gonna trim this particular fabric, or excuse me, zipper down to eight and a half inches. I just wanted to pull the exterior fabric up here and show you kind of where we're going to be placing it so you get an idea of what we're doing. So the first thing we're going to do is measure for an eight and a half inch zipper. So we are going to pretend that this zipper doesn't have this end here and it doesn't have this stopper on this end, right? So we're gonna say, I'm just gonna pretend that this is where it stops, okay? And I am going to sew across this and make a pretend or a new stopper on my own. Again, this does not work for a metal zipper. You don't want to take a needle on your, um, your teeth and have your needle break on you. With the nylon zipper, you can sew across it. However, you still wanna go nice and slow so you don't break anything, okay? So the very first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna lower my presser foot here and I'm going to slowly sew across my nylon zipper. And then I'm just gonna reverse a couple of times and I'll show you my new little stop. Another nice feature on this machine is it has the thread cutter, so I can just click that button, and then there you go. I've got my new stop right there. So I'm gonna cut pretty close to it. And I had my other scissors to do exactly that, but my little snips work fine, right? <laughs> okay, so again, we are going to be doing an eight and a half inch zipper. So. We obviously have a longer zipper than that, right? So now we're going to measure from our stop to here, eight and a half inches. So we're gonna pull it back to here and I am going to mark my tape. Make sure eight and a half, there we go. I'm gonna mark my tape right there. I'm just gonna put a little snip in there. Okay. And this doesn't have to be exact. Again, this is very forgiving when you are doing your zipper, um, installing your zipper. It just has to be smaller than your exterior and lining fabric. So, and I actually went just a little bit too 
exact. I actually want to give it just a smidge more. So that little mark is where I want to sew across my zipper. And can you see my see that, Brian? My hand's kind of in the way, isn't it? There we go. It is that fine? Okay. So we're going to kind of kiss the zipper as much as we can, the tape, kind of hold it. And what we're going to do is sew across this part, just like we did on the other side. You want to make sure that your zipper head is in between these two points. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> so we're going to cut it or sew it, and then we're going to cut off the extra. So I'm going to place this underneath my foot, make sure my zipper is all nice and straight. It's not being weird and puckery. Check my little mark. You can also mark it with a pen, whatever you would like to do. I just like to make sure. There we go. And then I usually hold it on both sides when I go over the first time, and then I can release it on my right hand and go back. There we go. So again, just a couple of times, and then cut that thread. Okay, so before you cut off your tape, I always recommend just double checking yourself, making sure that you're at that eight and a half inches, and that is where I'm at. And now I can go ahead and cut on the left hand side. Got my little gauge there. <laughs> it's a magnet, right? Okay, on the left hand side and just do it just like that. There, now we don't need this little extra. And we have our new zipper size, eight and a half inches. So this is just really handy that if you don't have an eight and a half inch zipper, on you, you're able to shorten the, the one that you have. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add little zipper tabs to the side of your zippers. This just makes it really cute when you make your pouch. If you can see those little yellow tabs, it's a little far away, but oh, I think you can see it okay. Just makes it really cute and gives it a nice polished look. So before I take these to the iron, I'm gonna show you on this side, what I like to do, there's different ways to do this, but I find it easiest to take the short end and fold it up to the top and then just kind of finger press it, making a mark. And then you could take the bottom and fold to the middle, just like that. And we're going to take it to the iron and press this so it stays in place, but it's easier to see what we're doing here, just like that. And then you would just flip it and do the exact same thing to the other side the bottom to the middle and then we're going to fold it one more time and what this is going to do is we're just going to sandwich that zipper in between and then we are going to do a little edge stitch right here and then we'll cut off the extra in line with the tape so now that I've shown you that let's go to the iron and we'll just press the other one quickly too like having my iron set up. This will just take a moment. So is anybody following along at the same time? I hope that we have some people with their supplies and they're making their little pouch. If you need me to slow down or repeat something, just let me know and I am more than happy to do that. I press that and I usually like to take one of my little wonder clips and just hold it while I make the other one. Maggie says she is. Maggie, awesome. I can't wait to see it. I hope you join our Facebook group and um, share that. That'd be awesome. Hope we see a bunch of little zipper pouches after we're done. Okay. Again, we're going to take the bottom and we're going to fold it to the middle. Now we're going to flip it around, fold the other side to the middle. Okay, and then we're going to flip it to the middle and do it one more time. Watch me burn myself today. Okay. Okay, so now we have our zipper tabs. Okay, 
I'm just gonna let those cool. We have a short little video that we wanna show you. So we're gonna take a really quick break before I show you how to attach those to the zipper. Live is back for a special one day virtual sewing event celebrating National Sewing Machine Day. The event is hosted by me, Trisha, with Sewing Parts Online. We have partnered with some amazing educators to bring you a jam packed day full of sewing machine demonstrations, including embroidery, sergers, and quilting machines, plus sewing machine maintenance tips fabulous special event pricing, and let's not forget giveaways. One day only, and we're going to be giving away over $10,000 worth of prizes. Let's have some sewing fun, all from the comforts of your home. We are super, super, super excited for Sew Creative Live in June. That's gonna be a ton of fun. If you are unsure what sewing machine you need, I would definitely tune into that. We've got a lot of great educators, so it's gonna be, it's just gonna be a great day. And actually, the cousin to this machine is going to be shown that day, that TL2010Q that I was telling you about. So, all right, well, moving on, I've got my little zipper here, and we are going to do one side first. And on this particular machine, depending on your machine, it's going to be a little bit different on where you're going to place your fabric. I usually do about an eighth inch away from the edge here. We're gonna make it nice and pretty. And I like to start off, off the fabric here, or I should say off the tape, that makes more sense. Because this is a little extra for you because we're actually cutting this off. You don't have to worry about back stitching or anything like that. We're just going to sew right across here, make it look nice and pretty. So depending on your machine, you may have to pull up your thread. When doing this, I like to pull up my thread because I have a little something to pull on when I get it started. It, it just helps me be able to position everything correctly and get started. So I'm going to hold my thread in my left hand. This is my top thread. And now using my needle up down button, I'm just gonna lower my needle and then hit it again to bring it up. And it just pulls up my thread for me. And then I've got my handy dandy bent tweezers, which I cannot live without grab my bobbin thread, and now I've got both of them here. And we were joking earlier, I'm a thread waster. I'm sorry to my boss. <laughs> I'm constantly pulling more than I need, but I like you having about five inches or so when I get started. But that's just a preference. So now I'm going to place my fabric and my zipper underneath the foot, and I'm gonna pick a spot on my presser foot that gives me about an eighth of an inch. So this is a straight stitch machine, it's center needle position, and that's the only position this particular machine can be in. And then I'm going to kind of look at my presser foot and see where I need to be in order for that needle to be coming down on the fabric about an eighth inch away. So I'm gonna look about the middle of that toe right there. So we're going to place that down and then when I'm working with little things like this, I also like to lower my needle before I lower my foot. It just helps me get that needle exactly where I need it to be. But before I actually do lower my foot, I wanna make sure that that zipper is sandwiched in there really nice all the way to the edge. And then I can put my needle down and then I'll lower my foot knowing that it's actually not quite where I want it to be. I'm gonna move that one more time. That's the nice thing about being able to see. It didn't go down exactly where I wanted it to. So I'm going to scooch it over just a little more, lower my needle, lower my foot, and I think that looks pretty darn good. Okay, so again with the tails, I'm going to hold them, give them just a teeny little tug to get started because sometimes it has a tough time when it's right on the edge of the fabric. So this just really helps get your, get it moving. So we're gonna do nice and slow. We're not in a hurry. There we go. And again, you don't have to back stitch. This is just for looks and it's going to be sewn here. So it'll be crossing over that seam, so you'll be totally fine. We can hit our thread cutter and cut that off. And then what we're gonna do is take our little scissors and we are going to cut it so this is nice and even with the zipper tape. It's one side. 
Okay. Just like that, see? And that's gonna be nice and pretty on your pouch. When you open it up, it'll have that nice little element. You can also increase your stitch length if you want it to look more like a top stitch instead of an edge stitch. That's fine too. Again, that's a preference. Do we have any questions right now, Brian? No. But Everybody following along? A lot of them. Well, my mic is off. Um, a lot of people are talking about how they're thread wasters too. So oh, I'm glad I'm not the only thread waster. I feel bad. And they've heard me say it how many times in here. I'm like, I am so bad at this. <laughs> it just means that we have to keep a scrap bag going. So that yes. when we do a live one day, we can do a scrap buster live with all of our uh, old thread. Agreed. If you're watching our TikTok, we have a little tip on there where we were taking, um, old thread off a bobbin and we had it actually on one of these spools over here and it just came off really quickly and we had tons of thread and somebody asked why are you doing that and we're like don't worry it was old thread we're going to repurpose it another way so <laughs> it's wonderful deb uh said she got to visit with dennis yesterday oh deb you got to visit or visit with dennis he's the sweetest isn't he i love him all right. Dennis and I have been working together for a long time. We were just talking about that the other day. I think we started about two weeks apart and we're both coming up on our nine year anniversary in June. So that's pretty cool. Great place to work. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do the exact same thing to this side. Again, we're going to place it in there, sandwich it in nicely. For those of you that are following along, do you have any questions about what I'm doing so far? We have one question, but it's not about what you're doing. Oh, what's that? Traveling through the mountains where I will most certainly lose reception. Will this be available on replay? Bernice, yes, it will. It will definitely be replayed on our YouTube. And I hope you enjoy your drive through the mountains. Not going to lie, I'm kind of jealous. That sounds lovely. I want to go to Montana so bad. Montana or Colorado. Either one would be fine. But then it's always a toss-up. Should we go to the beach or should we go to... The mountains and usually the beach wins out so <laughs> but i do want to go on that trip but we want to take a big old road trip where we're gone for a while and see lots of different states okay so once again i'm going to drop my needle first after i position it can you tell in particular i'm like no i want it in the exact spot okay we're gonna put that in lower our foot Make sure that I'm looking at the correct spot on the toe, and then I'm going to double check my zipper and slowly go over the tape. Okay, that's all we have to do. And then we're going to cut that as well. And that's it. Really, that's probably the hardest part of this project. And you just shortened a nylon zipper. How fun is that? That opens up so many possibilities when you're like, oh my goodness, I can't get to the store. I can't order online. Hopefully you'll be ordering online, right? <laughs> but if you have zipper tape, this works so, so well to shorten your zipper to the size that you need. Okay, so there we go. We've got our eight and a half inch zipper ready to go with zipper tabs on. So now we are going to start to put together our zipper pouch. So let me get my stuff organized here. Actually, I need those. We're going to start there. So you can use a marking pen to mark the center of your exterior fabric. However, I find it easier to just fold it in half and take your scissors and we're going to put just the teeniest little snip. You don't want it too far down because then you're going to get into your seam allowance and well, that would just not, not be good. So we just want to take our scissors and do just a teeny little snip to show the center. See? Look who's on. Look who's on. Rebecca, hello, how are you? She's a favorite on our So Creative Lives. We love her. All right, so we've got that right in the middle. If you can see it. And I'm actually going to do the exact same thing to my zipper. So I'm going to fold it in half and I am going to carefully kind of bend it a little bit, try to find that center and do the little baby snap. Did I say snap? Mm -hmm. I sure did. Snip. <laughs> My brain, people. I'm glad y'all are patient. <laughs> Next, we're gonna take a piece of our lining fabric and we are gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna fold it in half. 
and we are going to do our little snip or snap, whatever we want to call it, right? There we go. Now, got that, got this, and we got this. Before I start putting it together, I just want to make sure to mention, if you are using a directional fabric, make sure to keep that in mind. So at this point, we are going to be attaching it. I'm going to be putting it this way. I always like to visualize. <laughs> so when I show you here, you'll see how everything flips and looks. But I always like to have it like this and then flip it just to make sure that my exterior fabric is in the correct place. So, okay. We have a question. Some more question. Doesn't snipping the zipper make it fray? On the side, that's totally fine. You're actually not um, snipping the zipper tape here. This is going to all be encased in the pouch. And the end, it doesn't matter because we put the tab on there. And sewing it over, you don't have to worry about anything fraying or being an issue. Good question. And we're actually gonna put the little snip on both sides of the zipper. So I'm gonna fold that again. And put that right there. This little. Okay. Okay. So this is where it can turn you around a little bit. So I'm going to lay it out and show you what I'm doing, and then we'll start constructing it. So we're going to do exterior fabric, pretty side up. So we're going to do that first. Then we are going to take our zipper, and you want it to start like this, zipper, pretty side of the zipper up, right? But we are going to keep it on the left-hand side and then we're going to flip it. So now your zipper is facing down and you're going to be matching up these center points that we just clipped in there, okay? So that's the first part, but then we have to add one more. We are going to be taking our lining fabric so now with our lining fabric, you actually want to take it and have the pretty side down. I like to ignore the zipper. I don't know why it mentally helps me. I just am doing pretty side of exterior fabric to pretty side of the lining fabric. All of those center points just get matched up now. Personally, I find it easiest to go ahead and match up those center points first and then work your way out. So here's where the wonder clips come in handy. You only need a few. You just go ahead and match up those center points and then put a little clip in there. And then you can go ahead and I'm going to open this actually. Let's open the zipper up. Makes it a little bit easier. You don't need to go too far because we'll stop and adjust anyway. So we've got our center in there and now let's go left. We're just going to keep the zipper tape lined up with the exterior fabric and then we're going to take our lining fabric make sure that's nice and straight okay just like that this can be the confusing part do we have any questions about what i'm doing so maureen followed up with another question she was the one that asked about the zipper okay and she was talking about the snip in the middle I told her in the comments, you just want to make sure the snip is small because then it'll be buried in the seam. When yes. you showed me how to make mine, uh, my snips were too big. So I ended up having to use another zipper. Yep, that is exactly correct. Thank you, Brian. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and continue lining that up. And personally, I just use the Wonder Clips to hold it in place for just a bit. Once I get started, I actually remove them and double check as I go. So again, you'll hear me say that how often. It's just a preference. <laughs> okay, so before we move forward to sew, we are going to swap out our foot to either a narrow foot. This one here is, if you can see it, it's very skinny. I've got a narrow foot that I'm gonna be using on my Juki or you can swap out for your zipper foot. So we can do that. 
This machine doesn't have snap-on feet. They actually have the screw-on high shank feet. So I'm just going to take my screwdriver and swap out the foot. Super, super easy to do. We actually have a lot of people talking about your machine in the comments. Do you want to talk a little bit about the TL series? Because I think somebody in in the comments was asking about um, the difference between the QI, the 2010Q, and the 18 QVP? I believe the difference between the 18 um, QVP and the 2010 is mainly um, the accessories that come with it. And also it has the mic or the 18 has the micro lift, correct? Yes. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so yeah, let me switch this over and then we can talk about it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I love the TL series. They're technically branded as a quilting machine, but they are wonderful for bag making, garment sewing, obviously quilting. You can do a ton of piecing on here. You can also do your actual quilting as well. So works out pretty darn slick. I have my TL2010, um, the TL2010Q paired with my Aussie cabinet and an insert. So I have flatbed sewing. So it makes sewing quilts super easy too. So, uh, but this particular machine, as I said, it's very similar to the 2010 Q. How it, however, it does not have the sub tension or the speed control. So this would be considered more of the entry level of the TL series. They are all the straight stitch machine. So keep that in mind. It just does the straight stitch, but it does it really, really well. So when you're like, why would I only want a straight stitch machine? Sometimes you just need a machine that's excellent at one thing, right? <laughs> so it does a great, great job. And um, with the next one up would be the TL2010Q and that's going to have that speed control. So if you're not really sure what the speed control is, um, if you notice, I've been using my foot control and I can determine the speed by how much I press the foot control. If I press it down further, it's gonna go faster. If I let up, it's gonna slow down. Now the other one does that as well, but it also has a gauge that if I turn that all the way down and then press my foot control to the ground, it's only going to go as um, fast as I allow it. And then if I wanted to speed up, I could change that speed. So that works really handy if maybe you're teaching somebody and have a little kid that is going to be doing it and you don't want them to take off, you know? So you're just gonna turn that speed down and um, yeah, have it only at a set speed. So that's a nice feature. And then with the 18, as I mentioned, it's very similar to the 2010. But that one is going to have more accessories. In fact, it comes with a bunch of accessories. If you go to our website, we do have uh, specs noted down below. So you can scroll all the way to the bottom of the machine page, and it'll tell you what's included and what's optional. And Brian's pulling that up so you can take a look. So he's going to scroll down. And I believe the, the 2010Q also comes with the extension table, too. Is that correct, Brian? I am pretty sure. Use our website and see. We've got it. Let's yeah. see, go to the bottom, in, uh, included accessories, standard presser foot, zipper foot, da, 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 da. Yeah, yes, so that one table. comes with a few. That's the 2010. It only has a few accessories. But if you go to the, the 18 option, that list is like, it's really long. <laughs> so it just depends on what you're going to be sewing and what, you're, what feature you're needing, which feature you're needing. Okay. So I've gone ahead and swapped out my narrow foot and I'm going to bring my bobbin thread back up. So I'm just going to lower my needle and lift it back up and pull that bobbin thread up. Okay. Now I've got this all prepped and ready to go. And usually what I do is remove my first wonder clip. And I actually make sure this is all lined up, but then I take that wonder clip and make sure my edge over here stays lined up. This is just to prevent my fabric from shifting all over the place on me. That's the only thing it's there for. And here I'm just double checking, making sure everything is lined up. Check yourself one more time. Exterior fabric is pretty side up. Zipper is pretty side down. Lining fabric is pretty side down matching like that. We are going to go ahead and take this zipper foot and sew our zipper tape. 
I like to have a little bit, where's my little zipper pouch? I wanna show you. I like to have a little bit of the zipper tape showing. So in order to do that, I am going to start a little bit further from the zipper teeth. So you can feel, I hope this makes sense because it's a little wonky here. I like to first, before I start sewing over here, see what my seam allowance needs to be. So I come in a little bit where the foot's not going to be hindered. And I lower my foot and kind of move it around a little bit and find that zipper tape. You can kind of feel your way. Um, but then I'm really close to the zipper tape. So there's a couple of reasons why you don't want to do this. One is going to be that you're going to have a hard time opening your zipper. It's just too close. You might catch the fabric in your, your actual zipper. Excuse me. So we're going to move our fabric to the left just a smidge and find a nice guide on our needle plate that we can follow. So I'm saying I've got a little extra room there, so some of my tape's gonna be exposed. And I'm just gonna take my handy gauge and that's gonna give me a quarter inch. So now I know I want to follow this quarter inch line. So I know that was a long way around explaining <laughs> what I'm doing, but we are going to now sew a quarter inch seam allowance. And we are going to start from the end. See how there's no zipper tape right here? We are going to start from the end and do a quarter inch all the way down. T, did you see Kelly's comment on the screen? I did not. Let's see. What's the measurement of the fabric and the zipper or can you make us any size you want? So today we are doing 10 by 10 and that's for the exterior and the lining. You need two um, exterior and two lining. And then the zipper is eight and a half inches. You can do any size you want. My little example here is actually smaller. I didn't even measure this. I was just having fun. But as long as your zipper is about a, an inch and a half smaller than the size of your your pouch or a zipper pouch. So, and you can also make it, instead of being square, you can cut it shorter and have a little bit longer bag. Actually, Brian, do you have your pouch from last week over on your desk? I wanna show them. You know what's so funny is you and I are, It's we always talk about how we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> we because I was literally <laughs> looking at my pouch and I was like, I wonder if I should pop on You and show totally it. should. So, that's my pouch. Um, I keep, my toothbrush and toothpaste in here because I like to brush my teeth <laughs> at mid-morning when I get to work. After his coffee. Mm -hmm. After my coffee. <laughs> so what we're just trying to say is you can really make it any size. It's just that the zipper needs to be about an inch and a half uh, smaller than the width of your fabric. And you can make it however long you want. I hope that helps. Uh, Barbara wants to know if you can box the corners. Um, I'm sure on this one... Yeah, you'd be able to. We're not going to do that on this one, but yeah, we can definitely box corners on another one. I love the look of box corners. Actually, that's that would be another good one. We'll have to do that live. <laughs> all right. So again, we are going to start all the way from the end, and we're going to do a quarter inch. I like to lower my needle first so I can see where I'm going to land. There we go. That is enough. And then we're going to drop. And we're going to get started. So if you need to periodically check, that's totally fine. This is another reason why these tweezers are handy dandy. You can move it over just a smidge, make sure everything's lined up. And we're going to just slowly sew a quarter of an inch. You want to go a little bit slow when you go over that tab. It's a little bit bulkier. So now I'm going to just do a couple inches at a time. Lock of light. And depending on where you're sewing, you might have to stop and move your zipper. So as I mentioned, I just use the Wonder Clips to hold it in place. When I get this far, I actually just remove them. And I'll show you what I do here in just a second. But I'm going to kind of lift this up 
leave my needle down, if you can see, I'm gonna leave my needle down and I'm gonna lift up my presser foot. And then I'm gonna kind of go under here and just close up my zipper and get that zipper head out of the way. Sometimes you don't have to move it, but I find that if I don't move it, it'll kind of bump out my, my seam. So I like to just close it up and then lower my presser foot again and we'll get started. So I removed the wonder clips. Now what I do is just line everything up like of these and do little sections at a time and just hold it with my one finger and then follow the guideline on my needle plate. Stop, make sure everything is all still lined up. Hold, follow the guide and continue. See how nicely that works? You can definitely use the wonder clips and keep them clipped the whole time, but sometimes I get a little bit of puckering that way. So this tends to work well for me. If anybody has any tricks that you know, let me know. That would be cool. We all learn from each other, right? Okay. I'm going to, and I actually shifted there. Okay. My nose itches. <laughs> okay, so we did the first one. Do yourself a favor and clean up your little thread tails as you go. My long thread tails. <laughs> okay, so this I kind of like to do a little self check. I'm flipping it back. I just did that like you know what I'm doing, right? Let me show you what I did. So we're gonna flip this. And then to visualize, this is your exterior fabric, right? We've got it going the correct direction. It's a directional fabric. I don't want upside down planes, right? Everything looks good. And now we are going to attach the other side. So I like to pretend that the zipper is not attached to the fabric. It helps, again, my brain. So. What I'm going to do is scooch this over and I'm going to grab the exterior fabric once again. Make sure that it is the correct direction. So it's the exact same thing that we did before. Exterior fabric is going to be pretty side up. Pretend this fabric isn't attached, right? We're gonna have our zipper and we are going to place the zipper pretty side down, okay? and we'll match everything up in a moment. Oh, you know what? I didn't put my center marks here. Let's go ahead and do that. I was busy chatting. So if you're just popping on to do your center marks, just fold your fabric in half and take a teeny little snip. Just like that. And again, you don't want it so far that you're gonna be into or outside of the seam allowance. So just a teeny little snip. And I already put the center snip here on the zipper and we'll do the center snip on the lining fabric as well. Fold that in half and baby snip. Okay, now we're ready. Okay, so our exterior fabric pretty side up, zipper Pretend the fabric is gone, is gonna be zipper is pretty side down. And then lining fabric is pretty side matching pretty side to your exterior fabric. And I'm going to match up these center points. Just like that. And put a wonder clip in the middle and then we'll work our way out. Again, making sure that everything is lined up. Like that. Do we have any questions, Brian? No, uh, not. Doesn't look like anybody has any questions. We do have a couple people that came in late that I want to say hi to. Renee Bolton is on. Hi, Renee. Dee Dee says that this is a great gift for Mother's Day. Oh, speaking of Mother's Day, we have a little video that we're going to be sharing here momentarily. Actually, do you want to pop it on and 
we can <laughs> you're so funny because i literally were you was doing just, that too <laughs> i was just about to ask you if you wanted to start it oh my goodness gracious brian and i just are on the same wavelength yeah so alex did this fabulous little video on some great ideas for mother's day so why don't we share that before we move forward Mother's Day is right around the corner. Your mom loves to sew or quilt and you are scrambling for ideas of what to get as the perfect gift for her because she deserves the perfect gift. I mean, she literally gave you life. Well, you're in luck because I'm here to give you some suggestions that are either going to be cute or practical or both. We're going to cover it all. Let's begin. First up, something really cute and actually practical because while she may have given you life, this gives her life or at least enough energy to do the projects that she wants to do. And that is a coffee mug. I mean, look at the handles. They're so cute. So you've got your pick of this one that has a tape measure for a handle or this one that has scissors. I feel like it's gonna depend on her personality. You have the peaceful crafter who has to open the windows as she sews to enjoy the sound of the birds chirping outside or the sewist who loves sergers for the simple fact that they have knives. Take your pick. The next thing that you can get her is an upgrade from her embroideries. From her embroidery. Embroid, em from her embroidery scissors. Why was that so hard? Your mom deserves something elegant and classy as she snips away at those pesky threads. Let me not cut myself. So let's add something to her sewing collection. This one gives me old Victorian vibes or something that you would find in the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean. It's now worth $2.7 million. That was a bit dramatic, I know, sorry. But the fun thing is it comes with a tape measure. You wanna see a magic trick? <laughs> it's oddly satisfying. And I just had the other one that I was gonna show you, but it flew away from me. Obviously I had it when I made this B-roll, but I have no idea where I put it. The third thing is gonna guarantee you as her favorite child if you get this for her. Let me find it. So if you sew as well, you might already know the frustration of going to put your foot on the foot pedal and it's slipping out from underneath you, or you're just not being able to find it at all because at some point during the day, it ran off. This is gonna help her out and it's gonna bring down her cortisol levels just a notch. This is the non-skid pedal holder, pedal stay. Yes, that, that is what it's called, brilliant, I know. But you put this baby underneath her foot pedal and it's not gonna run away from her anymore. She's gonna be so happy. You're gonna see a lot more beautiful smiles on your mama's face every day, so. Good one. The fourth item. We all know your mom is not gonna spoil herself, but she deserves it. Right now, she might even be using a kitchen chair to get all of her sewing things done. That's not good enough. Now with this next thing I'm gonna mention, you can go in with your siblings, or again, if you want brownie points as a favorite child, get it by yourself. We're gonna upgrade her chair to a hydraulic sewing chair. Not only is it super cute, but it's super functional. It's got really amazing lumbar support, so her back is gonna be extra happy every day. And she's gonna be able to sew for even longer. My favorite part about the chair is that it has storage, you know, for extra thread, bobbins, chocolate, whatever your heart desires. Number five, why don't we get her something that holds her needles? No, not this, this is boring. Let's do a macron. It might be small, but it's mighty. And you can, you can get several. If she's got several needles, get a few. There's also a blue one. Something unique about this thing is it's also gonna sharpen her needles with this little feature right in the middle. She's got something cute, functional, and it's gonna boost the longevity of her needles. I think that's a win. The last thing I'm gonna mention, but certainly not least, look, I know your mom loves her cookie tin. We all do. The nostalgia is great. However, we can do something just a little bit better. I know your mom's gonna say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the tin can that carried my cookies 34 years ago works just fine. I'm sure it does, but we're gonna do better because your mom's worth it. How about this beautiful basket? The cookie tin does its job, but does it spark inspiration? Probably not. And because your mom deserves extra love, it comes with a pin cushion. All right, 
Personally, I'd go one of two ways. Option one, snatch up the chair that's gonna give her back some extra serotonin, fill it up with some chocolates or coffee mug, and maybe some extra thread. Or option two, get the basket and fill it up with the embroidery scissors, the macaron, and these button pins that I haven't talked about yet. But you see, again, just like the cookie tin, her normal pins are probably just fine. We know that. But these are really cute. And the flat surface of the buttons makes them a whole lot easier to slide in and out of the fabric without bunching stuff up and getting all crazy. So I hope that this helps spark some ideas. Every single one of these is gonna be linked in the description below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, including a ton of tutorials, I definitely recommend that you subscribe to us so that you always know when a new video is coming out. And if you do end up getting one of these, let us know in the comments and even come back and let us know how she liked it. Till next time and happy Mother's Day. <laughs> the only question we have now is, is who's going with option one and who's going with option two. That video made me giggle. I absolutely loved it. And I love the tin because aside from, <laughs> now I'm like going off in a la la land. My husband is obsessed with Royal Danskin cookies in the metal tin. So when she showed that, it made me giggle. <laughs> Full side note, I'm sorry. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> I see a comment over there too that says, now you have to add in the machine too. <laughs> Don't forget yes. the machine. Then you'll really get the brownie points, right? <laughs> All righty. So we are prepped and ready to go for the other side now. And again, we are going to do a quarter inch seam allowance since we established that already. And we are going to start from the end all the way down. So let's make sure we get started. That video just made me giggle. That's all, that's all I'm thinking about now. Oh, let's see. So are you guys doing option one or option two? <laughs> I was talking to you, Brian. Oh, uh, I'm not. Hold He's, on. Is no. my mic on? Yeah, it's on. Um, I'm not doing either because I'm doing something special, but I can't say it because. Oh, I yeah. I would give it away. Yeah, because my mom might be watching this I was, playback at some point, so I'm not going to say what it is. I literally was just about to say what it is. I am so glad I didn't do that. <laughs> I would have felt so bad if I was the reason that. The surprise was messed up. Well, the surprise will be revealed probably at some point next week. <laughs> cool. All right. So once again, I lowered my needle first, then lowered my presser foot. Now I'm just going to give my thread just a little tug. See what I mean? It's nice when you start right at the edge of the fabric. So I'm going to remove this particular little wonder clip. And I'm sewing a quarter inch seam allowance. I also want to know who is a messy sewer and who is a neat sewer. I throw things all over the place. I'm trying to keep my little area nice and neat right now, but I'm making a mess. Okay. So again, I'm a few inches in, so I'm going to remove my wonder clips so I can line up the way that I like to do it. It's going to go like these. Line up on the edge. Anybody admitting to being a messy sewer oh i'm a messy sewer for <laughs> sure you should see it in here when all three of us are doing projects we'd we'd make a disaster it is an utter <laughs> it's a <disaster>. hot mess oh <laughs> uh, i see kim saying i'm a messy sewer <laughs> all right kim we're in it together okay so again that zipper head is right here so i'm going to leave my needle in lift up my foot kind of get on in there there we go. And I'm going to close up that zipper or actually I'm opening it this time. I'm going to open the zipper. Now it's out of the way. And then before I lower my presser foot, I'm just going to line everything up nicely. You're working with a little bit more fabric this time. And then we're going to line up that zipper tape, place the lining fabric, and then lower the foot again. Hold with my finger and follow the guide. I don't know. Does anybody else do this? I'd love to know if you keep things clipped or if you like to line up as you go. It totally depends on the project for me. Sometimes I use pins, sometimes I use wonder clips, and sometimes I do it like this. So, Would you ever use glue for something like this? You could use basting tape. 
Um, I'm sure I've not used many of the glue options, but basting tape for installing zippers is mwah. It works so, so great. I should have had that to show you guys. Basting tape is really handy. Okay, a little bit more here. I got off the last time just a smidge, so I'm gonna make sure I'm holding it properly this time. Okay, there we go. And let's see what we have. So this is the part that always goes, oh, double check, because sometimes it's, I've done it where I've gotten it backwards. <laughs> so you would just open it up and I'll show you what it should look like. Like this. We're gonna close the zipper so it's easier to hold. So this is what we should have so far. Your exterior fabric and then your zipper head facing out. So let's just pretend our bags together, it's gonna to look like this, right? Okay, so that means the lining is the red, right? Looking good so far. Do we have any questions before we move forward? Anybody sewing along with us? Nope, no questions. Okay, you guys are all doing great. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our zipper because after we sew these together, we need a way to turn it right side out. So. We are going to open our zipper first, and then we are going to place our exterior fabrics together, pretty sides together. Match those up, and then that in turn will make your lining fabric match up. So we're like this now, okay? So I told you the zipper part is the hardest part, but honestly, the this part is probably the one that gets people the most, and that's nesting your seams. And I'm going to scooch over here to this camera so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I'm going to clip my little tails like I told you. And with nesting your seams, you take this seam allowance is going to the left, you see, right? And this one you want going to the right. It's going to distribute the bulk. You're going to match them up like these so they sit tight together. I would say they're, they're kissing there. And then you're going to pin or use a wonder clip to hold that in place, just like that. And I like to do this on both sides before I start matching up the rest of the bag. I said bag instead of pouch. I get made fun of because of the way I say bag. It's my Minnesota accent. <laughs> you would think it would be gone by now. I've been in Tennessee for 12 years. <laughs> So I'm actually going to do a double whammy here. I'm going to put my wonder clip there and I am also going to place a pin because sometimes it shifts on me. So we're going to pin that nice and close, but not on the zipper tab that you created. It'll give you a little guideline where you can sew at. So can you see what I did there? That zipper ends right here and then this is held in place. So now we're going to do that with the other side. When you're doing this, excuse my arm, when you're doing this, you want that seam allowance to be the same direction. So this one is now facing to the right. This one is facing to the left. And we're going to nest those as well. I'm going to scooch this because I need to. This is easier than I'm making it look because I'm trying to finagle for the camera, but <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now you can see all the way down that it's not like one going left and one going right. So we're going to do the exact same thing. Place our little wonder clip. And then put a little pin as well. Just right there. To mark it in place. Okay. Perfect. So now we've got our middle ones attached here and I like to move my stuff out of the way and we're going to get this all nice and straight and put a little few pins in there. So what we're doing now is we're going to line it up as best we can. And sometimes it shifts a little bit, but this is the, a great project for just kind of 
compensating where you might have had a little mistake. It's very, very forgiving. We're going to lay this down here. Brian, would you mind putting the um, machine camera on instead of me so they can see what I'm doing over here a little bit? Does that help maybe? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna straighten that out as best I can. Everything lined up nicely. And I usually do one or two wonder clips on each side here. Line that up. And with our measurements, you have about three quarters of an inch away from your zipper tabs, but we are gonna do a half inch seam allowance and that allows you to not sew over the zipper tab because I have done that before and it looks wonky afterwards. Functional, but wonky. So make sure that's nice and neat. Place a couple here. And before we do any sewing, for those of you that are just popping on, you want your zipper open at this point because we're gonna start sewing around and we're gonna leave a little turning hole and if it's not open, it, <laughs> I'm not saying it can't be done. You have to finagle it open through the fabric and it makes it a little bit difficult. So I think everybody's done that once or twice where they forgot to open the zipper. Okay, just like that. Now we've got it like this. And then we are going to leave an opening on the bottom when we sew around this and we're going to stop, leave an opening and then continue to sew. That again is how you're going to turn it. So if it helps you, you can place a couple of pins just showing, hey, don't sew here. Because sometimes we need those reminders, right? And you could even put a little X in here if needed, if you're like, <laughs> can be forgetful. So we had chosen the teal fabric as our exterior fabric. So what I like to do is do a half inch seam allowance and then half inch, half inch, half inch, all the way till about two inches into the lining fabric. And then what I do is taper, taper it into about a three quarter inch seam allowance. The reason that I do that is by making the lining a little bit smaller than the exterior fabric, the lining sits in the bag nicely. If you didn't do that, it's not the end of the world. It's just that your lining fabric is going to bunch up in your exterior fabric. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now that we have everything ready to go, I'm going to sew down one side and then I'm going to sew down the other side and then do the ends. So, all right. If you change machines often and you get confused by your needle plate, one of these little seam gauges is super handy because you can find the center needle position or where your needle's coming down and then see where the gauge shows a half inch. And then you could even do a handy dandy little magnetic, magnetic gauge, there we go, I can talk and then you can place that, and then you don't even have to think about it. You can just put it next to it. But since I'm going to be transitioning into a three quarter, making it a little bit larger, I'm going to remove my, my gauge here. But just a note, I love that thing. So I'm just gonna do this right there. Okay. And we're gonna come up to half inch there. So from the bottom of your other fabric, you're coming in a half inch. You could do it all the way from the end, but it makes your points look a little funny. So you wanna do half inch from the edge. And then we're gonna lower our needle. And at this point, we are going to reverse stitch. So we're just gonna take a couple of stitches and then we're gonna reverse just like that. And now I like to hold my fabric between my two fingers and just remember not to look at the needle, you want to look at your guide. So I'm right in between here. Just gonna kinda watch that and sew along.
And at this point, you can switch back to your regular foot. You would see less shifting like it's doing. But I actually like to keep it on with this narrow foot because when I come up to this zipper tab, it gets close enough. Um, it gets it gets close enough. I just like how it looks. So we're just going to keep on going. And I'm going to make sure that doesn't fold over underneath. And I'm going to stop here for a second and show you. You can see that my fabric didn't match exactly right here, but I'm just keeping it consistent going with that half inch. And then I'm going to go to three quarter inch seam allowance here momentarily, but I'm going to stop and I'm going to have to remove my pin. But before I remove my pin, I want to hold down right here so it doesn't shift on me. So I'm going to remove that pin and you can kind of feel where that zipper tab is. And if you can see that little lump in there, maybe right there, I'm going to go right next to it. Again, don't sew over it, just sew next to it. There we go. And that's probably a better angle. You can kind of see the little lump there. Okay. So I'm still going around that half inch and it went off a little bit, but that's okay. So we're down just a little bit more. And instead of stopping at a half inch down here at the bottom, I'm going to go up to about an inch and I'm going to mark that so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Again, this is just so it lays, it goes into the pouch nicely and doesn't bunch up. So you can measure it or you can just kind of guess. Since I have my gauge handy, I'll just show you. Where's my little one inch? Where's my one inch? Dude, I'm losing it, guys. Where is it? <laughs> My goodness gracious. You need some coffee. Oh, I need a lot more than coffee today, oh, guys. Oh, I totally forgot. I was going to say before we started this, we should make a, a cup of coffee before we do our live. Oh, together. that sounds nice. And but actually, I totally forgot. I'm going to give you a visual here, too, where I'm going to do three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to be tapering it in, and then I'm also doing about an inch. I am losing my mind, guys, seriously. <laughs> okay, so that means my, my point's gonna be here. I know it looks like we've got a lot of extra fabric, but you'll see why it looks nice at the end. So I'm just gonna visualize my line here. I don't have to exactly use my needle plate. I'm just gonna keep going and taper to this point here. I just wanna pop in really quickly and say yeah, thank go for you it. to Kim N. She's uh, answering some questions about um, the supplies needed for the project. Oh, so thank you, Kim, for helping us. Thank you, those Kim. Questions. We appreciate your help. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to reverse stitch here. Okay. And that's one side. Now we're going to do the other. And I'm going to start with the exterior fabric. So I'm just gonna do a little flip here. And I like to make sure everything's kind of straight. And if I have to compensate for any oopsies, I can do that now, but it's looking like it's pretty good so far. And we're doing about a half an inch away. And then we're gonna do a half inch here. So let's drop the needle. And reverse. So again, we're doing a half inch seam allowance on the exterior fabric. And coming all the way up here. And we'll stop as we go, remove our wonder clips. And you can see that it moves around a little bit on me because this is really narrow and it's not making contact with the feed dogs. So if that's an issue for you, you can always swap it out to the other foot like I mentioned. So I'm going to move my pin here, hold. I can feel that little zipper tab in there. Remove that, but I'm not moving my finger and I can sew up to it. Right, and it's right next to it. Let's 
Make sure this is nice and straight. Okay. Okay, and I'm a couple of inches down, and now I'm going to once again taper into end at three quarter inch seam allowance and about an inch up if I could find that inch. <laughs> I still think that's silly. That's my favorite tool. I don't know what I'm doing today. And if it helps, you can also uh, draw lines with a marking tool that you can just follow. As you can see, I'm kind of just winging it. It works out, works out pretty well. So now that this side is also sewn, we can lift up our foot, leaving our, excuse me, leaving our needle, lift up our foot and then pivot. And we are going to sew up to that little pin that we put in to where we're gonna have that opening. So we're just going to sew across here and reverse stitch, remove our pin. And now we're gonna cut our fabric or cut our thread. I'm gonna sneak up to this point up here. And let's see, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that actually just a little bit further. Because my estimate of an inch was incorrect. <laughs> okay, and then that is where we're going to sew up to. And never sew over your pins. You don't want to break a needle. Okay, so that's the one side. And again, this is going to be the opening. And then your zipper should be open at this point. And it is. So we're good there. And now what we're going to do is sew across the bottom of the exterior fabric and close that up. You don't have to leave a hole in there because you have an opening to turn everything right side out. We're just going to start at the point right here. You don't want to go into the seam allowance because... T. Yeah? We had some technical difficulties. Oh, no! And we lost our, our feed on the sewing machine, but Alex is going to get it pulled back up. Okay? okay, sounds good. Well, then I'll hold off for just a second. Do we have any questions? Nope. It looks like we got it back up. Perfect. Perfect. All right. We all good to go? We're all good to go. Okay. So... I'm going to just repeat back a little bit here. So I'm on the exterior fabric and I'm going to just sew across from point to point here. I'm not going to sew into the seam allowance because we're actually going to be trimming all this away. So we're just sewing right to that little point. Question. Yes. Right on the screen. No interfacing or, stable or, or stabilizer needed. Not for this project. This one is nice and simple. Also, hi, C. Lombard. It's good to see you. Oh, I didn't even notice it was C. Lombard. She's our friend too. All right. Yeah, when you get into the larger totes or bags, purses, things like that, you'll be using interfacing and stabilizer. But for this little project, not necessary. Okay, so at this point, we are going to trim this down. Um, you can use pinking shears if you would like, or you can just use your scissors. We're going to Take the, I'm going to bring this over here. We're going to cut it down to about half the seam allowance. This is just going to remove some of the bulk. And I still have, have my junky scissors. And so this will just take me a moment. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around. You can use a rotary cutter and mat if you would like, but I have accidentally cut into my stitches. So I usually like to take a scissors or a pinking shear. Just a lock of these. We're almost done, you guys. They're doing wonderful. Flip it over. Let's cut the bulk off that. And on a lot of projects, I like to be exact, but this is a wonderful little project if you are looking to knock some um, sewing out and you just want to get behind your machine i like doing that it also makes a wonderful gift you could fill it with you know toothbrush or toothpaste like brian 
<laughs> Maybe other people like to brush their teeth at 10 o'clock in the morning, right? No, you could put some candy in there or any little makeup bag. Be great. So we're going to trim this all the way across as well. And then I want to show you a little trick on the bottom that I like to do. Okay. So we've got that. Now, in addition to trimming this off, you also want to clip the corners. So you don't want to sew through the stitches, but you just want to take that corner off, just like that. If you can see, maybe if I put it back here, it's a little bit easier to see. There we go. You just don't want to clip through the stitches. Again, this is just removing bulk. I love that name. Okay, so my little trick here, we're going to trim it down to about half, but I don't like to do that on this middle part because when I flip it in and you put your fingers in to put um, the fabric in the proper place, it goes together nicely when you just go like of these. Alex and I are looking at the comments and we love this person's name. <laughs> Sir Robin the chicken. <laughs> love that. <laughs> nice super, to meet you, Sir Robin the Chicken. Super cute. Now, we hope to see you popping up on all our lives. That'll be fun. Okay. See how I leave just a little bit extra there? And now comes the fun part as soon as I clip these corners. There we go. Clip that corner. Okay. And now we have our opening here, right? And our zipper is open. Here comes the fun part. We are going to flip it right side out. See how easy this project is? We can do it. We can do it. You can also use a point turner to make sure that these corners are all nice and popped out and crisp. I'm gonna use my fingernail. <laughs> Do it like that. And then before I close up the bottom, I always like to double check myself. I'm gonna show you on this side. Do you wanna pop back to the other camera? I wanna just show how this looks close up. So, well, let's see about, it's clearer that way. There we go. Because we didn't sew over the tab, it just sits nicely. It has just a little opening there. It looks so nice. If you sew over it, this all kind of bunches up weird. Again, it, it doesn't hurt anything. It just lays, lays strange. So now we're going to go back. This is the fun part. Just takes a little work and everything out. Okay. And then I usually put the lining fabric in, and kind of bunch everything up and try to get the corners on the exterior fabric poked out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Almost there. I'm getting excited. <laughs> and we'll go on this side. Okay. Perfect. And then now we know, I'm just going to set that in there for just a moment. Now we know that everything is the correct direction, the zipper is correct. We can go ahead and close up the lining. So I'm just gonna pull this back out and I'm gonna show you my little trick on why I like leaving that little extra fabric. So we left a little bit thicker than the others that we trimmed off. I'm just gonna go like this. And when you place your fingers in and just pull it, because it has a little extra fabric, it just lays nicely in there. And then you can just close it up like that and now we can just do a little edge stitch to close the bottom of the bag. Handy dandy, right? And you don't really have to get this corner out because we're gonna be tucking it back into the exterior fabric and working out that corner. So you can leave it like that, or actually, personally, I like to sew all the way across just so it looks the same. So I am gonna poke it so I can stitch all the way across like that. So we're gonna just Put our fingers in there and then we're going to do a little edge stitch and for this I could you know what I am going to leave this foot on so this will be nice and close to the edge I can actually just follow right on the edge of my presser foot I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread 
So I have a little something to tug on when I get started. And I'm going to line that up, drop my needle first, then my foot. And I will tell you, sometimes I do get stuck right on the edge doing this. So I would highly recommend using the little thread tail to tug. Otherwise, it's, it's a little bit difficult to get it started. So we're just going to do a little tug, do a couple stitches just like that, and then reverse. And we're going to go all the way across. Normally, I would use a matching thread, but because I wanted you to be able to see what I'm doing, I do have a contrasting thread color. But personally, I like it to match, even though you don't really see it, so it doesn't really matter, but I know. <laughs> who likes to be matchy-matchy and who likes to be like all over the place? Either is fine. <laughs> we're gonna get to the end here and backstitch, and we're gonna hit the button. Yay! Okay, here it goes. Now we get to snip our thread, and we are going to turn it right side. Tuck it in. Okay, so now we're going to take our lining fabric and push it into our exterior fabric. And I like getting those little corners in there. Just a little bit more. Deb says she's a matcher. She likes to match her. She friend. likes to match too. It's understandable. I just like everything to look all pretty. I but like... then I see all the chaos when other people do it, and I'm like, that looks so cool. Why can't I do that? <laughs> my thing is that I don't want to change. The, I don't want to have to rethread my machine, so I'll just use what's in Convenience, it. right? Yeah. Matter of convenience. <laughs> nice. Okay, you guys, I think we did it. Can you switch over to the other camera so I can just show the inside of this bag because I wanted to explain here really quickly. Let's see if I can tuck this under so you can see what I'm doing. Well, maybe. But because we had a little shorter or a little larger seam allowance on the lining fabric, see how nicely that lays in, let's see if I can push that back a little bit, lays in your bag. It, is so nice it's not bunched up or anything and by just taking that little bit extra off or a little bit larger seam allowance there we go words it works all right i think we're done you guys we made a little zipper pouch yay so now i think we should go in the comments what are you going to use your zipper pouch for <laughs> toothbrush Candy, yeah, toothbrush, <laughs> gifts. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that was a fun little project and I will go ahead and type up some instructions. So then if you are maybe needing to read the instructions versus trying to watch back our replay, you're welcome to do that. But I know some things I say don't often make sense. So <laughs> I'll put it in writing and make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, and we'll put it in our Facebook community. Yeah, group. we'll put it in our community page like we were talking about before. And hopefully we'll see a bunch of pictures of our little zipper pouches. So anything else we need to add, Brian? No, I think that we're good. All right. Well, you guys all have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you next week on our next episode of Social Circle.